Since its launch, the DS has been a haven for RPGs, so it's no surprise to see Nostalgia, a game conceived during the Saturn days, finally getting a release on the platform. It definitely evokes its namesake with its traditional combat system, but does the experience come at the price of some antiquated flaws? Nostalgia goes the route of alternate history fiction set in a version of 19th century Earth. It's got a distinct steampunk style, telling the tale of four young heroes as they set out across the world to track down mysterious artifacts. You'll not only be racing against a rival syndicate that's hell-bent on world destruction, but also dealing with the skeletons lurking in each character's closet. It all culminates in a predictably happy ending, but it's a satisfying one nonetheless. The plot never gets too dry so that it plays out like a history lesson, though it does usually feel legitimate. On the other hand, much of the script and the cutscenes are quite cheesy, the result of weak dialogue and rather awkward on-screen animations. It's decidedly a throwback in terms of narrative delivery, which may feel novel at times, but ultimately out of place in this day and age. Nostalgia lives up to its name. If you've been playing RPGs for a while, you'll find many similarities to classic PlayStation, Saturn, and Dreamcast games. It follows an established formula. You'll go to a town, explore a bit, and finally grind your way through a lengthy dungeon. There's also a good bit of gear and item management, as well as character advancement through an ability point system. Even though the main adventure is quite linear, there's an emphasis on straying off the beaten path. There are more than enough opportunities for exploration and several side objectives that, while completely optional, can easily occupy you for hours. The main problem isn't the cookie-cutter nature of your quest, but rather that it's constantly dragged down by archaic mechanics that stick out sorely in a modern RPG. In particular, the frequency of random battles approaches horrendous levels. If you're familiar with Skies of Arcadia for the Dreamcast, then you know just what we're talking about. The result is a grind that feels endless, which makes even the simplest task, like, say, solving a puzzle in a dungeon, feel like an arduous chore. You're not even safe on your airship. Believe us when we say you'll come to dread the random encounter sound. Nostalgia's second biggest flaw is its difficulty balance, most notably in its later portions. For nearly half the game, you'll find that the random encounters in some dungeons are more difficult than the actual boss battles. This trend later shifts to where the boss battles become flat-out sadistic, and they happen so soon after one another that you'll feel utterly beaten down. There's also a ton of mandatory grinding at several junctions, which becomes rather tedious. The challenge level is just too uneven, resulting in a brutal level of difficulty throughout much of the game. Nostalgia provides a classic RPG experience, but it has its fair share of bumps in the road. The inclusion of a quick save system and a party chat element that steers players back on course does smooth out the turbulence to an extent, but not nearly enough. Getting around in nostalgia is fairly simple when you're in a town or dungeon, but one of its hooks is the airship element. Rather than crossing a giant world map on foot, you'll take to the skies in your personal aircraft. Though not a unique concept, nostalgia's air travel does work differently by allowing you to travel at three different altitude levels. The result is a bit constraining, adding to the already sluggish handling of your ship, where simply turning around can be frustratingly slow. As for the combat, there's a familiar system in place which borrows heavily from previous RPGs, most notably Final Fantasy X. It's strictly turn-based, but rather than leaving you guessing the participant's attack order, the bottom screen shows you who's on deck for a turn. This allows you to plan your moves accordingly, as well as guess at the effects of any given action. And that's a good thing, considering the sheer number of battles you'll engage in over the course of the game. The one real drawback is how easy it is to select an incorrect input, which often leads to dire consequences. The airship battles work similar to the ones on the ground, with a few minor alterations. You're not controlling the airship so much as the actions of your characters, each of which mans a different onboard weapon. The big difference comes into play when you take into account your ship's position in relation to your enemies. While this adds another layer of strategy, the airship battles end up playing out just like any other enemy encounter. It's weird that a game that puts flying machines front and center winds up with airship battles that feel behind the times when compared to those in other games. <laughs> 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 
Nostalgia's visuals are handled by the same team that did the 3D remakes of Final Fantasy 3 and 4, so you'll see some striking resemblances. It's not as polished as it could be, but it's still a good looking game. The character and enemy designs are simplistic, and they retain the chibi style that's heavily utilized by other Japanese RPGs. As for the game's score, it's limited to a few paltry tracks, but they're generally up to the task. If it were released back on the Saturn as originally planned, Nostalgia probably would have become a cult classic. But there's a reason some of the elements that drive it have gone the way of the dinosaur. If you're looking to experience an RPG from the days of yore, Nostalgia certainly delivers on its namesake. Otherwise, proceed with the knowledge that its retro design will leave you at your wit's end.